Today's video, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make these box joints right here. There are many different reasons to use a box joint. So let's check out some of them. Finger joints, box joints have Big advantage uh, over a lot of other joints. Number one, they're easy to create. Uh, you can make box joints on the router table, you can make them on the table saw, you can make them by hand, uh, a lot of different ways that you can make them. And the second point is that they allow a lot of glue in the joints. So if we take a look here, let me get a nice one here, there you go. If we take a look right here at this here, we can see that it adds a lot of glue line to it. So the glue goes in and out of all of these. It makes for a nice solid fit in between all of these little fingers or box points that come into the joint. The other advantage is that once it's assembled and pressed together, it almost automatically makes a 90 degree angle, which is what you want. The other nice thing about these type of joints is that they are solid and once they're done and glued up, it generally, uh, you know, they don't, they don't break really easy. And the last thing I can say about a box joint and finger joint is that if it's made with different color woods and done as a finish, it could look quite nice. It uh, has a nice little design to it and you can use them for drawers, cabinets, boxes. Uh, a lot of different uses. Anything that has a 90 degree angle, you can use a box joint or fing finger joint on. So it adds that decorative touch, it adds that strength, it adds all that glue surface. So the first thing you gotta do when you're making, oh, and I almost forgot one other thing about the box joints, is that you can actually make your pieces of wood to the dimension that you want them. So for example, if I had these two pieces, I wanted to make a butt joint here, uh, you know, with this one going on the inside of this particular piece right here, I would have to subtract the width of this piece from this cut, from this piece, because that way, if I didn't, it would add too much and be too wide. So in this case, it'd be a half inch on each side. This piece would be one inch too wide if I just made it the full length that I need it. Now on a box joint, because these pieces are interlocking together, um, the pieces can actually be made to the actual size. So if I need a 12 inch piece across here, I can make that 12 inches. I don't have to make that 11 on two of them and 12 on the other two. They can be 12 inches across here and 12 inches across here to make my joints. So you don't have to, you know, use a lot of math to make box joints. You just make them the size that you need them or whatever the size your finished piece will be. So as far as layouts, let's look at how to lay them out. So the first thing you want to do is you want to label each one of your sides and it's relatively easy to do it with just A, B, C, and D. Uh, that way you know that the A side is going to go to the B, the B is going to go to the C, the C is going to go to the D, and of course the last two remaining ones are the D to the A. The other thing you want to make sure that you have is you want to label which one is the top. And you can label the bottom if you want, but I just label the top corners. So that way I know that this top corner is going to match up with this top corner. So that's the way that these two are going to go together. Um, and when you're making the cut, that's going to be important as to how you're making that cut. Because once you start with the top and you work your way down, you want to use the top of the other piece up against the next piece that it's attaching to, to make the finger joints correct on the second piece. And we'll show you that once we get to the jig. So like I said, the first thing, lay them out correctly. And then we're ready to move on over to, in my case, we're gonna use the router. Uh, but you could take this process to the table saw. You could also do this process with a handsaw and you would just require a little bit more laying out of the pieces. So let's move on over to the router and start cutting. Okay, so we've got our boards marked and because I'm using plywood, I'm actually gonna use a straight carbide bit in here. Normally. I use a downward spiral router, router bit, but um, those dull really fast with plywood and they tend to split them out rather quickly. 
Um, carbide straight bits seems to work a little better, although that does seem to burn rather quickly too. So when you're um, doing this, what you do is you have your tops and your bottoms. And actually this is D, so let me get an A. So these were already cut once. And um, I'm just gonna show you how the whole process goes on here because I will actually have a sacrificial piece in front that keeps them sandwiched between two pieces of wood so you can't really see what's going on and that prevents any split out or helps to prevent any split out. You're still gonna get some split out with the plywood. But um, what you do is you start out with the plywood up against your indexing key and uh, it goes on through the half inch and then you have goes to the second you take whatever that what that you take sorry you take that cut out and you put it over onto your indexing key and you make another cut out then you take that cut out and put it on the indexing key and you go on over to the other one and the next one and as you can see on this one you get quite a bit of split out when you don't have that front piece uh, on protecting the plywood so uh, that's one of the reasons that I'm going to be doing that for these drawers here. Now, because both the front and the back drawers are exactly the same, um, it's easier if you take and do them at the same time. So what we will do is we will do the front and back drawers first, then we'll do the side parts after that. Now, when you get to the end, and let me get this side and this top here. So when you get to the end of your cut here and you make your, your last cut, you actually take and flip this one around and you put it on the indexing key and you use that as a guide for your first cut on your next piece of wood. And that's gonna guide, the, guide that, uh, this piece of wood here. Then after you make this cut, you just move it on over to the indexing key, make your next cut, and then make your next cut and your next cut after that. So it's a relatively quick process once you get it set up and you start working on it. Um, you just want to make sure that you have the half inch adjustment here, which this is all set up and all been adjusted. So uh, theoretically it should work perfect. So let me get set up and let me start making my cuts. Now I want the pieces to butt up against my indexing pin for my first cut. And I'm making sure that this piece is tied up against there. And we, it looks like we're set to go. So I'll make my first cut. Move it on over and put that cut in the indexing pen. Go ahead and make my second cut. Move it on over. And make my third cut. It's not a bad idea to take that out and not have to go through it again, through the uh, router bit. But if you hold it tight enough, it should be fine. And you want to make sure that you don't get any chips that are going to get in the way of the index pin and the pieces. Cut here, and that one pulled it rather quickly, so you got to be careful of that. So now I'm going to take my top pieces and I'm going to rotate them around, lock them in the pin. And all I do is get them lined back up again. There we are. And make this a little bit tighter. And then my sides, I'm going to make sure that I have the T and T at top is going to butt up against the top of this one so that way it should give me my pattern correctly and then now we just continue on over repeat the same process using my top pieces here up against the pin for my front and back
Okay, as you can see, the cutting becomes quite the repetitious pattern and uh, it goes together rather easily. So we'll just get a, a quick fit here just to make sure that we have our joints, which it seems like they are about right and it looks like they're fitting together pretty good. So we'll take it on over to the table and assemble this. And uh, that's just about the right. You want them to be somewhat tight, but you don't want them to be too tight where, you know, any glue that you put in there is gonna squeeze out because of the tightness. But um, yeah, it seems like these are gonna fit pretty good. And as you can see here, they go together and match up pretty decent. And we don't have, the splint out is not too bad on it, actually. Uh, when we flip them over, we definitely have a good side. Now, you notice that I waited to cut my bottom groove. I always cut my bottom groove afterwards because I will um, space it depending on where this piece is here, how this lines up. So I'll try and make my bottom groove so that my front and back door, my front and back, that you're going to have one part where that groove is going to show all the way through unless you have a stop groove in the bottom here. So if I'm going to have it come all the way through, I want it to be on the front and the back because nobody's going to see the back of the drawer. Nobody's going to see the front because I'm going to have a false front in front here. And that way the groove, you know, it shows on the front and back. Nobody's going to ever see it when they slide out of the drawer. They'll, they'll see it if it's on the side, but they won't see it there. So I always wait and put that on afterwards because that's adjustable. I mean, you know, there's a minimum that you need in height so that you have enough thickness there to support that bottom piece but you can, uh, you can adjust it accordingly to how your drawers come out. And that's, that's how I like to do it. I'm not saying it's the best way to do it. Maybe, you know, there are a lot of people that disagree with me, but um, uh, that's just how I put my drawers together. Anyway, let's go put these together and take a last look at how the cuts came out. So, there's the finished drawer here, and let me just hammer that one in a little bit more. And you have to be careful when you're putting them together, you do get a little bit of a chip out there. You can chamfer the edges if you want before you put it together. Um, but, you know, these are drawers, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. The pins are a little proud, which is what I want. I want to be able to sand them down smooth and make everything uh, finish perfect. But, uh, yeah, right now... This is a good fit. This is exactly what I want. And um, this drawer is together and it's, al it's already solid with no glue in it. It's already got a solid drawer. And box joints, excellent uh, joint to use for drawers. Uh, the next best one is of course dovetails and we'll deal with that a little bit later. But uh, right now, this goes together pretty good and works quite well for what I want them to be used for. And for mass production, uh, this is gonna be much easier for me to do rather quickly. Uh, they're doing dovetails all the time. So, if you enjoy this, please do subscribe to the channel and uh, stick around. We're going to have a lot more, or I'm going to do a lot more building with my kitchen coming up this summer. I have to finish this summer. That's my goal. And hope you're around next one. Thanks for watching.